I spent a day in the town of Billund in Western Denmark, which happens to be one of Denmark's most popular tourist destinations. Can you guess why? Now some of you might recognize Billund and that's because Billund is the home of Lego. It's where all the headquarters and offices are. In fact, the original Legoland theme park is also based here in Billund. A crazy fact about Billund is that despite it being so popular, so synonymous with Lego, it's actually a very small town. It's sort of in the middle of nowhere. It's based on this area of Denmark called Jutland, which is about a three hour drive from Copenhagen. And the population of this town is only 7,000. And despite it having a population of 7,000, it has the second largest airport in Denmark, which is just crazy to me. I mean, imagine the country's second largest airport being associated with such a small, small town. I'm actually staying in a town that's about a 20 minute drive away from here in Billen. And given that I had a couple of hours to kill today morning, I thought I'd come to the town, check it out and show you guys around. Given I only have a couple of hours here, I obviously don't have time to visit the theme park, but there is something called the Lego house, which I'm guessing is a museum of sorts uh, that sort of showcases the Lego. So I'm gonna go there first and then sort of go from there. Here we are at the Lego house. It's actually a lot bigger than I thought it would be. It's got a bit of an interesting design as well. Um, there is a car park for the Lego house. Uh, it's free for the first hour and then 20 kroner per hour afterwards. And based on current exchange rates, I think about eight kroner is one pound. So it's about two pound 50 per hour, which isn't too bad. Uh, Denmark, like most Scandinavian countries, it's a bit on the pricier side. So that's something to take into account if you do plan to come visit Billund. Once you enter the Lego house, you are instantly greeted with this signpost of the various areas within the museum. At the time of my visit, there was also this incredible Lego sculpture of a McLaren F1 car right by the front desk, which is where I purchased my ticket, which came in the form of a wristband. Once I had entered the museum properly with my ticket, I came up close to this beautiful Lego tree of life. Tickets were 38 pounds, which is crazy for a museum ticket to me. I'm not even that crazy about Lego, if I'm being honest, but hopefully by the end of it, I feel like it was worth the money. I can't lie, these dinosaur sculptures look very, very cool. I can't imagine how long it would have taken to create them. It must have been hours. But my favorite one is the one on the end over here, the yellow one. It looks like something you'd find in a Transformers movie. The Lego house is split into different zones depending on colour and here in the red zone you can build your own Lego sculpture. I feel like I should give it a go though I can't promise anything good, I really have no creative spark at all. I don't even know where to start or what to even build. There's some people here creating some pretty epic sculptures. I think it's best if I leave it to experts and move on. This section seems more up my street. You can build race cars using Lego. And then, and then you can race them on the track over here. So if like me, you've come to visit the Lego house on the weekend in the middle of the school holidays, it can get very, very busy. But each section does have its own terrace bit and I'm currently in the green zone, as you can see, by the floor. And yeah, from the terrace, you get some decent views of Billund. But more importantly, you also get some peace and quiet. Oh wow, I'm a huge fan of this. So the green zone is the explorer zone and it feels out that I'm here. But yeah, the level of detail on this sculpture is absolutely crazy. I wonder how many hours it took to complete this whole thing. Must have taken months. And I guess this is like one of the selling points of Lego. You really can create whatever you want. Nothing is impossible. On the other side, we have this sculpture of a town, which is even more detailed. I mean, look at it down here. The level of detail, like I said, is just crazy on some of these sculptures. Though, the stage in here shows Spain and England, which I feel like it's taking the piss a bit after what happened with the Euros. 
And here's the third sculpture we have in this area. This is more of like a theme park vibe. We've got some Ferris wheels, some rides. Yeah, it's not as impressive as the other two, but it's still incredible. I then went down to the bottom of the Lego house, where there was an exhibition on the history of Lego, showcasing how its designs and manufacturing processes have changed over time to become the global brand it is today. There was even a small section on some of the sets they've released over time. And of course, to no one's surprise, there was also some Lego pieces lying around for people to build stuff. Just finished up in the Lego house. There is a gift shop at the end, and I went inside to look for like a small figurine or something that I could keep on my desk, but it didn't really have any of that. It was mostly like sort of big sets, which cost hundreds of pounds and take up such a large area. I don't really have the space for that at home. Like I said, I'm not a huge fan of Legos. So for 38 pounds, it did seem a bit excessive to me. Um, maybe if you're like a huge Lego fanatic or you have like kids so you can afford to spend the whole time there, then maybe it's worth it. Right, it's now time to see what the rest of Billund has to offer. As you can see, the streets around Berlin seem to be very, very empty, even though it's a Saturday and it's the middle of the day. I feel like people just come here specifically for the Lego house or the theme park. It seems like Berlin has its own teddy bear museum, which I have a feeling can't be that great. I mean, I don't know, are teddy bears that appealing? Maybe if you're a kid. Next to Teddy Bear Museum is one of the Lego offices, which is just over there. And over here as well, we have some more offices. And I think this might even be the actual headquarters itself. And then behind this is the actual Legoland theme park. And then behind that is actual Billund Airport. So you can sort of see how everything in this area is really close by. There's also apparently an Aqua Park, which is about a five, 10 minute drive away from Billund itself, as well as a zip line as well. So. I feel like if you were to fly into Berlin and sort of base yourself around here with your family, there's definitely enough stuff to keep you going for at least four or five days. As I walk through this park, it's very weird to think that this is like a popular tourist town within Denmark. It's so quiet around here. I mean, apart from the Lego house itself, I don't think I've seen more than like 40 or 50 people, which I just find crazy. Now here's a sign you rarely see, it's always keep off the grass or no board games here but I've never seen a sign that says play on the grass. I guess that's the whole idea behind Lego, it's meant for everyone. Hopefully from this clip you get an idea of how small this town is. There's Lego house and the Lego sort of headquarters are about a five minute walk away from each other and they're supposed to be sort of in the centre of the town but like I'm sat outside the headquarters right now and you can see just over there in the distance it sort of leads to forests. Even though I've been to Denmark a few times before, this is the first time I've sort of ventured out of Copenhagen and I've really enjoyed staying in this part of Jutland around Billund. It's very nice, the scenery is really pretty and the locals as well are very friendly. Our Airbnb host came over today morning to give us fresh bread rolls which was very kind of her and yeah sort of I guess that's sort of a metaphor for most Scandinavian people. They're known as a very friendly bunch of people. And based on this trip so far, I couldn't argue against it. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video of Billund. Apologies, it's quite a short video. I only had a couple of hours to kill. In fact, I need to grab some lunch and head back to my Airbnb to get ready for the wedding tonight. It's a bit of a weird place. It's a lovely place, but I just find it a bit weird at how it's so associated with Lego. I feel like there's nothing else to do here apart from all the Lego related stuff. It's very rare to find places like that, I guess, in the world. I guess in America, you have Detroit, which is like associated with Ford. And there's maybe a few places like that dotted around the world, but it's not a common thing. In fact, before the Lego company was founded, Billund was like a hamlet, basically a village. There's maybe a few hundred people living here. So the town's really grown with the company. It's now time for me to sign off. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe, like, and do all that good stuff. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.